Consider a line of charge of length 2L. The charge is uniformly distributed with a charge per unit length of lambda. So here's a picture of this line of charge. And the goal is to calculate the electric field, both the magnitude and the direction, at point P, which is a distance A above the center of the line. Now remember, for a point charge, E, the electric field, equals KQ over R squared. Now I don't have a point charge here, I have a line of charge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a little bit of charge, a little piece of the line. And so that little piece of the line will create a little tiny bit of electric field. So DE, a little tiny bit of the electric field, equals K over R squared DQ. That's the electric field from a little bit of charge, DQ. Okay, so imagine I have this little tiny piece of charge and I'm going to call it DQ. And so at P, it's going to create a little tiny bit of the electric field DE. And notice I have the E bolded there, it's a vector. And I can call the angle between that little bit DE and the Y axis theta. And then by vertical angles, I also have another angle theta down here. Now let's look at another piece of charge on the other side of the line, same distance apart. So in this case, it's going to create a little tiny electric field that points the other direction and the angle theta will be the same. And I think if you look at this picture you can see that the X component will cancel out and the Y component will add. And that's true for anywhere on the line here. There's always going to be a point opposite the line that's going to cancel out the X component. So I only need to worry about the Y component. From symmetry, the electric field must point along the y-axis only. So since I'm only interested in the y component of the electric field, I can make a triangle here. DE will be the hypotenuse, and then I can break that into components, DEX and DEY. And then this is my angle theta. I'm making a triangle with the y-axis here. So cosine of theta must be the y component over DE, and so the y component is DE cosine theta. Great. So that means that DEY is K DQ over R squared cosine theta. And we should always check to see in these types of problems if you can use symmetry to simplify the problem. If you can use symmetry, it can save you a lot of work. Now we don't have to worry about the X component. Okay, so here's my expression for the Y component. If I were to pick a different DQ, like a different piece of charge somewhere on the line, what would change and what would stay the same? Okay, well, k is a constant, so that stays the same. What about r? r is the distance between my little piece of charge and point p. Well, that changes. If I change where dq is, then r changes. What about the angle theta? Well, again, that's going to change. If I pick a different piece of charge, that angle is going to change. So I need to express everything in terms of one variable. Okay, so this involves a little bit of algebra. First, Pythagorean theorem. So I know from this triangle here, where I have sides of A, X, and R, you, you can see this from the diagram, and if I make X be that bottom distance there, that's the distance from the origin to my little piece of charge DQ, I can use Pythagorean theorem to express R in terms of X and A. So R squared equals X squared plus A squared. From trigonometry, and the same triangle, I see that the cosine of theta equals a over r, which is a over the square root of x squared plus a squared. So let's use both of these expressions in our formula for dey. Okay, so if I do that, I get dey equals ka dq over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves power. That's because I have r squared times r, and r is written as a square root. Now I can use charge density to change the variable of integration. Right now I have dq. It would be better if I could integrate, say, with dx. Well, lambda equals q over 2l, and that equals dq over dx, a little bit of charge over a little bit of the length. Okay, so that means that dq, a little bit of charge, equals lambda dx. Great, now I can plug that in, and now I'm integrating with respect to dx. So here's my expression for DEY. I'm ready to integrate. So EY, that would be the Y component of the electric field, equals the integral from negative L to L of KA lambda DX 
over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves power. Well, the k, the a, and the lambda are all constants. And if I notice, again, from symmetry, that instead of integrating from negative l to l, I could integrate from 0 to l and multiply it by 2. That would be just taking half of the line and then multiplying it by 2 to get the other half. Now, you could go through and do this integration, and in another video, I'll show you how to do it. Or you could just go ahead and look it up. So I'm just going to give you the answer right now, and then later on, we'll look at how to actually do that integral. So it ends up being 2k lambda l over a times the square root of l squared plus a squared. So now I know both the magnitude and the direction of the electric field. So some things to remember. I know this seemed like there were a lot of steps here, and maybe it wasn't completely obvious what the next step was. Well, the overriding goal is to get the integral in terms of just one variable and in terms of something that you can integrate. And that may not be obvious right from the start, but you just have to try stuff out. So some hints I can give would be make sure you use symmetry to try and simplify the problem and use the charge density to change the variable of integration if you need to. Finally, ask yourself what's staying the same and what's changing. And remember that the things that stay the same can just be pulled outside the integral, but the things that are changing all need to be expressed in terms of one variable. I know these problems can seem tricky when you first see them, but trust me, if you work a few of them out, you'll start to see some patterns, and it won't seem so mysterious.